25 minutes before 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this uh, Thursday morning. You know, when I do these interviews over the phone, uh, rather than just showing uh, you know, the camera when we do the live the podcast thing on us, because there's no guest here, it's just Robin and I, uh, I like to put the cover of the book. The problem is, uh, and, I, and I do this like every day, I wait till the last minute. <laughs> I wait till the last minute to go find the cover, yeah. and I and I found the cover, and the the book is about procrastinating. So I, I it's like okay, hit me in the face, <laughs> just hit me in the face. Uh, the book is called Soon. It's written by our guest Andrew Santella. Andrew is an award-winning journalist, a self-proclaimed procrastinator himself. In fact, I was just reading a little bit online. Uh, he's a contributor to GQ. Which is where I get all my fashion tips from, by the way. <laughs> uh, the New York Times Book Service. He's got a whole lot of credentials to his name. Soon is the book. An overdue history of procrastination from Leonardo and Darwin to you and me. And by the way, I, sometimes when I tell guests this, they don't even know it themselves. His book is now number one on uh, Amazon in the popular psychology personality study category. Wow, that's pretty good. Uh, to be number one at anything would be good. Uh, Andrew Santella, good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Larry. Uh, I'm well, thanks. I, I, I have to say, I, I, when I when I heard Robin laugh the way she did about, when you said about you, what you said about your fashion sense, I I, I think I got a picture of you know, <laughs> what it might be like. Well, you see, I've been I've been trying to think to myself, I'm going to be more fashionable, but I keep putting it off. <laughs> don't be so hard on yourself that's one of the lessons of the book <laughs> this is a great topic and, and you know Robin and I interview people every day we've been doing it for 15 years first time this topic has come up procrastination so mm. you, you hit on a good topic well and, and that's funny because I mean it's just such a prevalent and you know nearly universal habit I mean so many so many of us do it uh, all the time and and um, it's it's um, and the other thing is that you learn so much about yourself if you, you, it's hard to think about procrastination for very long without running into some really like basic questions about what matters to you and what your priorities are and your values that sort of thing yeah I, I well, the one thing I don't procrastinate in is getting here to the job because I, I always get up way early enough so I, I got that one under control so that's the only thing I have regimented. Everything else is kind of... So what did you do? Did you study uh, people who, who admitted to this? Is this, is this a sin, by the way? <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> Well, you know, um, I'm, I'm not sure I'm qualified to speak on the sin question, <laughs> but uh, I, I think my I think my uh, my my first motive in undertaking the book was <laughs> I was looking for a way to excuse my habit. You know, I was looking at, I was I was trying to rationalize my procrastination habit, uh -huh. and I thought if I dug if I dug deep enough into the history of procrastination and the psychology of it and the philosophy of it, I might find some little you know kernel of research that would say that you know it's okay. Okay. Um, and I'm not sure I ever found that, but I did, as I say, find that, that you know, it's such a universal habit. And so I felt a little less alone. And I found that, um, yeah, I didn't need to feel quite so bad about being a procrastinator. So are we, in a world where we can get anywhere really quickly, it, you would think that we wouldn't be late now. I, I can understand it when all we had was a horse and buggy. <laughs> <laughs> But you would think we'd never be late anywhere, right? Yeah, except that it's not just a matter of the external stuff. So, like, there's two different ways to think about procrastination, I found out. One is to think that it's a product of what's happening outside of you. That is, all the deadlines being imposed upon you and the, the to-do lists and all that sort of thing. And all the distractions, for that matter. Or, as you said, maybe the technologies that allow us to get places fast. That's all external stuff. But what I what I makes more sense to me is to think about procrastination as originating inside of each of us like with the moods and emotions that, that we have trouble regulating. So so uh, there may well be technology that allows me to get wherever I want when I want to be there, but if I am a little ambivalent about going to that place and I'm not sure I really want to go there, I'm going to find a way to be late. <laughs> and, and that's an interesting part of this, too, because if I think, well, what do I do while I'm procrastinating? And, and you, you know, the clock is an important tool in this whole thing because if you think I can get there in 30 minutes and, and you leave – just at 30 minutes, you're probably going to be late. It's almost always the way it is. Right. right. 
<laughs> that that's a fact. Yeah, and the the other you know the the thing that's interesting about procrastination is that it's not you know. A matter of like laziness. It's when you when you're putting one thing off. It's not that you're n- not doing anything in the interim. It's usually that you're doing something else instead. And 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 what I found was that sometimes the that second like unsanctioned thing that you do instead of the thing that you were supposed to do ends up being like more wonderful and more worth your time than than the first thing that you were supposed to do. It's, it's kind of a kind of a reassuring thought, at least for me. Explain the part about um, Leonardo and Darwin. Explain that part. Well, so you know, uh, one of the things that I find reassuring is that there were, as you said, some so many you know great achievers in history um, that you could also find times when they procrastinated and put things off. L- uh, Leonardo was, uh, you know, we know him as uh, ultimate Renaissance man, man of science, yeah, uh, right, right. artist. But to his contemporaries. You know, he was he was like notorious as a <clears throat> excuse me as a as a guy who couldn't get his work done, couldn't finish projects. Oh, really? Michelangelo loved loved to needle him about that. Yeah. So the problem was that he was pulled in so many directions by this really like active intellect he had. So that when he was supposed to be finishing this ah, portrait, that one I'm of the that one. had <laughs> right. I try that on my wife all the time. And she just doesn't buy it. But but no. So you know, he he was he he just couldn't. He he was just and. So in that, you know, in his case, you really can't separate his genius from his impulse to procrastinate. I'm not saying that his procrastination fostered his genius, but I'm saying that the two were intertwined. And you really, it's it's interesting to think if if Leonardo had just been a really diligent workmanlike dude, would he have been as great of an artist as he was? I don't, I don't know. It's right. an interesting and, question. You know, and you hear people say that all the time. I get my best work done when I'm late or, or when I'm running late. You've heard, I've heard that a lot, with, especially like uh, journalists. I, I've, I've known a few people who write for the paper, <laughs> and, and their deadline is like in an hour, and, and they'll be writing, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, you right, know? right. Yeah, writers are, and journalists, it's, it's an interesting case, because, I mean, that's the one field where the deadline's supposed to be sacred, and, and yeah. is sacred, yeah. but we're, we're also the worst procrastinators, and, and boy, we, we're really inventive about ways to justify the, the habit. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. So, is there, uh, was it different to write this one uh, as, regarding research, as far as other, other books that you've written? The thing, the thing that was really interesting to me was how many different sorts of people <laughs> research procrastination. That is, how many different like disciplines do it. So, like, I, I, I found psychologists who research it, and behavioral economists who do it, and and biologists and geneticists. All these different fields approaching the same topic from different directions, and they all had their own sorts of ways to conceptualize it and explain it, and maybe even try and fix it. And th- those different ways to approach it often like contradicted each other. But <laughs> as I talked to them, it, the funny thing was that they all made some sense to me. They, all, I kind of would agree with all of them. So, you know, I, I worked at a, an assisted living facility one time, and there was a guy who lived there. And he was up in age, but he was independent. And he had, um, I guess, Down syndrome. I'm just going to say that. Maybe I'm wrong about what he had. But he was always on time. So if I, if, if I left him off, for example, at the mall, uh, and he said, uh, pick me up at 1015, he would be out there at 1015. <laughs> it was like, like clockwork. And, and so one time I, came, I did exactly that, and he wasn't there. And um, turned out he was at a different door at the mall. But the point is... A guy like that, you would think, would be the the worst procrastinator. And the, the truth is, he was the, the, probably had the best work ethic of anybody I've ever met. Huh? Yeah. Well, I, you know, I find that so many of us, like, even if we're you know committed procrastinators in one area of our lives, we're often really dutiful in in another. So yeah, that yeah. maybe I, I might be really bad about paying my bills on time, or well, that's not oh, such a great quality. Yeah, uh, me but, too. But, but on the other hand, I always meet I always meet my deadlines for work or uh, what, whatever it is. It might right. be my I'm, I'm I'm really lax about cleaning the house, but uh, but totally diligent about uh, about getting to the dentist three uh, twice a year or something like that. Well, you were doing really well on Amazon. Uh, number one in uh, what was the category I said again? Uh, in uh, personality, a uh, popular psychology personality study 
category. Um, do you know all this stuff? You're number 14 in the creativity and genius category, number 34 in the personality category, and number 35 in the creativity category. That's pretty good. To uh, have the, it's great to hear. I mean, it's just it's a testament to like you know how you know, many people sort of the to- the topic resonates for them. They're they're interested, and in, I mean, it's such a it's such a, a rich topic. And the book just came out uh, two days ago, so I'm, uh, I'm I'm sure people are just just discovering it. And uh, you know, I'm grateful to, for the chance to talk about it with you. I don't want to make you late for your next uh, appointment, uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you for being on the air with us. Uh, for the listeners, uh, how do we get the book? I found it on Amazon. Right, it's it's yeah. Anywhere you find uh, find good books, I uh, or you go to my website, andrewsantella dot com. Okay, good enough. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you for being on the air with us today. That was fun. Thanks so much. I really enjoyed it. You're welcome. We'll be right back. Started in 1975, it's Yendel's Building Materials. Whether you're making repairs, adding a room, or building a house, Yendel's constantly delivers excellent service and top quality materials and many of the tools and hardware you need to get the job done. At Yendel's, they take pride in supplying their customers with new and innovative products. Yendel's experience in trust design, manufacturing, and component materials is second to none. 834 North Magnolia Avenue in Ocala, 732-3000. Stop by to experience the difference. Here is your one-minute news brief from the source WOCA. The Marion County Sheriff's Office says a murder, suicide in Silver Spring Shores has left three people dead. Alachua County deputies say they arrested a man for attacking a dog owner with a tennis ball launcher. Navy officials say a U.S. Navy fighter jet crashed yesterday off the coast of Key West, Florida. Its two crew members died after being transported to Lower Keys Medical Center. Guests of Walt Disney World Resort Hotels will soon pay as much as $24 a night for overnight parking. An employee of the Florida Department of Citrus was arrested after mining the agency's computers for Bitcoin. The effort to designate